Welcome to um, a little tutorial I made up here for inking using a Wacom tablet and pen uh, in Illustrator CS3. Um, I got a lot of comments and emails on the last drawing that I did um, with Marilyn Monroe and so I've decided to set up a little tutorial for the people who might be interested in wanting to know how this exactly works and how I set up my tools and all that. Um, first off, as you can see, I've got my drawing set up here. Uh, it's in layer one, and the layer is locked. And I'll get to why that's important a little later on. Um, but for right now, let's go up here to the brushes panel, and I'm using the three-point round. And this is a pretty good general brush for line work that's not too intense it's not very it's not good for use with large areas but just overall line work getting the outlines done and contours of your drawing the three point round works pretty well so if I double click that it pulls up another window um, for more brush options if you go down here to diameter it shows up as a three point brush which is what I'm using you want to make sure that this setting here is set to pressure so it notices the variations in the pressure that you put on the pad with your pen so it's similar to actually painting or inking a drawing your variation you want to make sure that's turned up to three points as well if you click OK then lastly go over here to your brush tool and double click that it brings up another window um, for preferences your fidelity is at two pixels smoothness is at four percent and I don't have any of these checked down here uh, just makes it easier that way and for fidelity and smoothness these are settings that you're gonna wanna play with depending upon which part of the drawing that you're inking um, sometimes if you're, if you're working on a long line like a strand of hair or things like that you may wanna bump up that smoothness a little bit more so that it the pen that you're, you're as you're drawing it doesn't pick up maybe crooked lines or you know your hands shaking or things like that that smoothness percent will make up for those imperfections in your line work automatically and you'll see that as I go on so uh, with that said I'll click OK and let's get inking so I'm gonna zoom in here on her eye and I'll start with that so you can get an idea of how this looks and how it's done now typically as I'm going uh, I'll start with her eyelashes here. You can kind of see how this is going to look. And one of the nice things about digital inking is that it's incredibly forgiving. So if you don't like something that you did, it's, it's very easy to just go back and delete it or undo it or whatever. Generally, I tend to keep my left hand on the control Z shortcut that way on my keyboard so that way if I get one lash or I get one line in there that I don't like I can just hit control Z and it goes away and you can keep doing that for as long as it takes for you to get the line that you're looking for it just kinda helps out and that's not really something that you can do on paper um, that's one of the nice things about this process is that if you don't like it you can start over you can delete a, a certain stroke a line whatever you want to do um, to help you get the effect that you're looking for in in your line work so it really really helps and you can get somewhat of an idea of how this is starting to shape up and how this is starting to look and you know it takes time but for those of us who have drawn drawings and ink drawings or even colored them you know that this is no short process there's no quick way to do it it's just especially for an artist who you know you know as well as I do you like to have your line work look perfect and nobody can tell you otherwise and this is a great way to kinda of harness that whole idea and I just it, it works really well and this is using Illustrator CS3. CS4 is is coming out or is out. I can't remember which. And I'm going to assume that those settings in there are probably going to be very similar 
to CS3. Um, I'll have to check it out when I get it. But um, as you can see, the eye is kind of coming together. And one thing you can also do is if you go back to your to your layers palette here, um, you can take away the eye or the visibility of your of your drawing, and you can see how it's starting to look. And you'll be able to notice maybe any imperfections, lines of areas that you might not have filled in properly. Go back and do that, and you can see a little more clearly. And the reason I have that first layer locked is because it's a lot easier to just separate your inks from the drawing. If, if you're willing, if you're going to go as far as to, as to color this later on, you know, or just use it as, you know, reference or, or whatever, it's best to keep your inks separate from your drawing. That way, you can't mistakenly ink in your drawing on the same layer. That way when you go to save it out, nothing is confused, nothing is, is missing from what you started. And that's why I locked that layer. It definitely helps in doing that because you know as well as I do, you're clicking around and then all of a sudden you're in the wrong layer and been inking for an hour and all that work has been wasted. So, um, But getting back to this as well, I don't really like the way that this eye looks. It looks okay. It's not perfect. This is one of the beauties of digital inking. I can go back here and go, well, I don't really like this eyelash, so what can I do? I can just delete that stroke. And I can come back in here, select my brush tool, and put it back in there the way that I would want it to be. And that's something that you can't do on paper. Once that stroke is down on your paper, it's over. It's, it's there permanently. It's not going away. Um, but again, and if you don't like the whole thing, you can just drag, select, select it all, and delete it all, and start over. That is the beauty of digital inking. And it's really helped me in some of the line work and stuff that I have done in the past. But this has been a tutorial to show you how that's done. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. You know, I had a lot of questions and comments on the Marilyn Monroe drawing that I did. So hopefully this will help answer some of those and help speed you along in your own projects.